So with this spreadsheet, I'm going to show you how to create those composite curves and then to move the heating curve up and down in order to determine the pinch point, and then from that determine the minimum utilities. What I've done here is reproduced, copied that table of the supply and target temperatures for each of the four heat exchangers in the base flow sheet. This is for the base, not for the modified one. So you're going to have to repeat this for the modified flow sheet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by looking at the hot streams, heat exchangers in which we're cooling off a hot stream, and then create the points that are needed to plot the composite curve. And what I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this by, first of all, I'm going to move these points down for the cold curve. So I'm going to be doing this calculation for the exchangers in which we do heating and the exchangers for which we do cooling separately. And we're going to, there'll be some slight modifications between the two. So I'm going to create a little bit of a gap in here in anticipation of that. So this is for the ones that we're doing the heating, the H's. What I'm going to do here is order the temperatures in this row for the, the, the two streams that we have here um, from small to high. Now, I'm just going to type them in because I can look at them. There's only four of them. It's very easy to do. But there, you could also do this by copying them and pasting them into a column and then sorting that column from low to high. Here it's a little bit, that's probably more work than is needed because I can just look at this and tell you the very lowest temperature is 380. The next temperature is 460, next temperature is 490, and the next temperature is 520. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the C's down here. Oops. I want to make sure I get in there. So for the C's, I'm going to do the same thing. The very lowest is 300, and then 350, and then 450, and then 510. There we go. Got that all done. So in these two rows right here, I'm going to calculate the heat exchange that occurs, the energy transfer that occurs for in the first in row three for heat exchanger one and for row four for heat exchanger two for intervals defined by the temperatures that are listed here at the top. So the very first temperature interval is 380 to 460. The next temperature interval is going to be 460 to 490. And the next one, of course, is 490 to 520. So the temperature or the energy change heat transfer that occurs in the interval between 380 and 460, I'm going to enter that value here. And I'm going to type in a formula that will determine if there is heat transfer in this temperature change for each of the heat exchangers for H1 and H2. And if there is heat transfer in this temperature range, then it's going to calculate that value. Otherwise, it's going to put a zero in that cell. And I'm going to create a formula in cell H3 that I can copy across to I and J and then in row three and then copy down to row four to do the very same calculations for H2. And if I had more, I could copy it down even further even if I had additional heat exchangers in which there was a hot stream that was being cooled off. So this makes the, the calculation very easy. Um, it doesn't require a whole lot of extra work once you have this formula figured out. It's uh, quite quite interesting, I think, to, to do this. So and if you had an orientation with me, you know how much I love using Excel. So let's create that formula. So we're going to use, we're, first off, we're going to determine, is there heat transfer in this temperature interval for H1. So the very first interval is 380 to 460. So to do that, I'm going to type in equals. And if we want to determine if there is, it's, that's a true or false statement, we're going to use the if function in order to do that. So I'm going to type in equals if. And if you remember, we did use this in, in orientation. And I presume you've been using it in classes since then in Excel. But I'm just going to review what you do. So you type in if and then a left parenthesis. And then after that, you type in a logical test so we have to come up with a mathematical way of, an, of testing, is there heat transfer in this temperature interval between 380 and 460? Then after we have that logical test, then we're going to put a comma and the value to put in there if it's true, and another comma and the value if it's false. So the very first thing we do is create this logical test. And what we're going to do is we're going to, to ask, to determine if there's heat transfer in here, we're going to ask, is the target temperature less than or equal to the lowest temperature in this temperature interval. So is this target temperature for in heat ex in this for H1, is that target temperature less than or equal to 380? And well the answer here is yes, it's equal to it. So that, that would be true. That would mean that there's heat transfer that occurs in this temperature interval. We're also going to check and make sure that this uh, supply temperature is greater than or equal to the right hand side of this temperature interval, greater than 460. In this case it also is that is true as well. 
And so both of those things have to be true. The target temperature has to be less than the left-hand interval point on the interval, and the supply temperature has to be greater than the right-hand point. Now to check it, if both of those things are true, we have to use the AND function. So after the parentheses, we want to type AND. Now AND is a logical function that if I type a parenthesis, it'll give me an idea of what I need to put in here. I need to put in logical statements. I can put in two, one, two, three, as many as I want. All of these have to be true if the AND statement will return a true value. If either of the, if we put in two, if either one is false, it'll return a false. If I put in three, if any of the three are false, it'll return a false. But the two statements we already figured out, that we want to make sure that the target temperature, D3, is less than or equal to the left-hand side of this temperature interval, G3. Then we'll put a comma. That's the first logical requirement. The next is that I want the supply temperature, C3, to be greater than or equal to the right-hand side of the interval, which is H2. I messed up a little bit. It shouldn't be G3. It should be G2 here, so I'll fix that. And then we'll close the parentheses. Let's just review this, make sure it's correct, that if D3, which is the target temperature, if that's less than or equal to the left-hand temperature in this temperature interval, that's G2, that's correct now, and C3, which is the supply temperature, is greater than or equal to the right-hand point on this temperature interval, if both of those are true, then we have heat transfer in that heat exchanger in this interval. Now, this is where we're going to think about I claim we can copy this down and across, and we're going to figure out how to do that using relative referencing. And this is going to go back and pull, hopefully remind you of some work you've done before as well. We have to figure out what's going to happen when we copy this across to begin with. So if I copy this across, the D3 will become a, a, an E3. I don't want that to happen. I don't want the D to change. I always want to use I don't want that to happen either. I always want to use what's in column D. I want to use the target temperature for, for H1. So I'll put a dollar sign in front, in front of that. Knowing that, I also don't want the C3 to change. C3 would become D3. I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of that. So when I copy it over, it's not going to change. If I copy this over, let's look at the G2 and the H2. G2 will become H2, and H2 will become I2. So I don't want the G, when I copy this over, Actually, when I copy this over, I want the G2 to become H2, and I want the H2 to become I2. So I want the, this is the next temperature interval between I and H. So that's correct when I copy it over. So as written, this will copy over correctly. It will determine whether the supply and target temperature for H1 is in between the temperature interval that, that we have. And so I'm just going to cut, type in here. Let's finish this off. I'm going to put in a, a 1 to indicate that there is heat transfer in the interval, and then a zero to indicate that there's not. Close that parenthesis and press enter. And then we'll copy this over to make sure it's doing correctly. And so the very first temperature interval between 380 and 460, yes, there is heat transfer in that interval between 460 and 490. Yes, there is temperature heat transfer in that interval. And the same thing for here. We got a one in each of those. And let's just look at that last one here and just see what the formula looks like. It's checking to see if the target temperature, D3, is less than or equal to the left-hand point on the interval, which is what we want. And it's also going to check and see that our supply temperature is greater than or equal to the right-hand point on the interval, the high temperature, which is what we want. So perfect. This is really, really great. It did what we want. Now let's tr think about copying this down. And come back here. And let's just copy this first one down and just see what happens when we copy it down. Well, let's see. It's using the correct supply and target temperatures for the comparison, but it's not using the, temp the fixed temperatures that we want. Instead of comparing D4 to G2, it's comparing D4 to G3. Because when I copied it down, G2 became G3. We change the row by one, so the number changed by one. To keep that from happening, we're going to have to put a dollar sign in front of the threes for both G3 and H3. So I'm just going to press Enter, and I'm going to come back up here and press F2 to edit that. And I'll come over here. I can fix that by just putting this dollar sign right here and a dollar sign right here. So now when I copy this down, G2 will stay. G2 when I copy it down, and H2 will stay H2, but when I copy it over to the right, G2 will become H2, 
H2 will become I2, which is what I want as well. So this is the formula that we really want in order to do that logical comparison. So let's press Enter, and then I'm going to copy it over. I still got the same values I had, and I'll copy it down. And this time we got what we wanted. We find that there is heat transfer interval between 460 and 490, just as we wanted it to be. Well, let's modify this one more time, come back up here, and instead of putting a 1 there, I'm going to calculate the heat transfer that occurred. That's just going to be Fc sub P, V3, times the temperature interval, G H2 minus G2. Now, we're going to go ahead and fix this up for when we copy it across and down. So when we copy this across, I want the V3 not to change. I don't want B to change, so I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the B. When I copy it down, I want the 3 to change to the 4, so that's okay. H2, when I copy this across, H2 will become I2, that's what I want. G2 will become H2, that's what I want. But when I copy it down, the 2 will become a 3, so I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the 3, in front of the 2, a dollar sign in front of the 2. So if you look at the referencing for G2 and H2 is the same for all their instances in that formula, and the same is true for D3, well there's not, and the same is true for the B, C, and D cells. So I press enter. This will now do the calculation of heat transfer in that interval. I'll copy it across. I can copy it down. I didn't want to copy it down that far, so I'm going to type control Z. I just want to copy it down one row. And indeed, we have the heat transfer occurred in each of those intervals. This is what we need in order to calculate the cumulative values. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this down even further. down two rows, because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum up the heat transfer for all the heat exchangers in this interval from 460 to 380 by using the sum function, and then we'll copy that across. And then I'm going to calculate a cumulative starting from a value of zero. I'm going to calculate a cumulative, which is equal to the zero value plus the value from the next temperature interval. And then I'm going to copy that over. Oops, I don't want to move it. I want to copy. So there we go. Those are the points that we want to plot in order to create the cumulative energy change curve for the, co the cooling curve. And we're going to do exactly the same thing for the heating curve, for the cold streams that we're heating up. So let's do that by, let's just try copying these formulas. Let's see what happens if I copy these down. Just control C over here and copy this down. I know it's going to be similar, but something's wrong here because there should be some heat exchange between 450 and 510. So let's figure out what that what we need to change here. And we see clearly there's some things we do need to change is that we do want to compare, first of all, we want to compare the supply temperature. So the supply temperature is, or target temperature, the target temperature D8, but to one of the two values but not in the temperatures for the H's. We want to compare it to the temperatures for the C. So we want to compare D8, which is the target temperature. That's the high temperature. We want to compare that to the high temperature on the temperature interval, which is 350. So we're going to have to fix things up a little bit here. We want D8 to be greater than or equal to, whoops, wrong key. Instead of 2, we'll just put an H. We're going to put this as or G, we're going to put this as H dollar 7. So let's look at this. So D8, which is the target temperature, the high temperature that the, we're, we're going up to, we want that to be greater than or equal to H7. Now that's the high temperature in this temperature interval from 300 to 350. That's correct. We want C8, though, to be less than or equal to, not H2, but G7. Let's check that and make sure that looks correct. We want C8 
which is the supply temperature, the low temperature, to be less than or equal to the left-hand point on the temperature interval, which is G7. Wow, okay, so that works correctly. In order to calculate the amount of, heat, of heat transfer that occurs, we have our energy exchange, we have B8, that's correct, times, but now it's not H2 minus G2, we want to take H7 minus G7. times the temperature interval. And now when I copy this over and down, it should copy correctly for the very same reasons as for the hot streams that were cooling off. So let's just check it one more time. The AND statement logical test, is there heat transfer in the interval between 300 and 350? We, we want D8, the target temperature, the high temperature, to be greater than the high temperature in the interval, which is H7. And we want the supply temperature, which is C8, to be less than or equal to the temperature, the low temperature in the temperature interval, which is G7. And it looks like we have it correct. And we copy this down with those dollar signs. It should copy correctly. So we're going to press enter. I'm going to copy it over. And then we'll copy it down. And indeed copied correctly. And I can actually just copy these because I have two cold streams. This will work. If I had different numbers of hot and cold, this would not work. But since I do, I can just copy this down and simply change this to the C's cumulative. There we go. I have a cumulative change in the cold temperature. Voila. I have the points now that I can plot. So what I'm going to do is insert a chart. An XY chart in which we use straight lines and it's taking some data for me. Let me go ahead and I'm going to move, before I insert it, I'm going to move over here. So I just want to put in a blank chart. I don't want to put in one that already is pre-populated based upon Excel. So I'm going to put that here. I'm going to reduce the size of it so I can move it over here to the side so you can see it. Make it a little bit smaller too so it fits in here. Okay. Maybe even a little bit smaller. You can, you can move this change this as you see fit for your computer. But now I'm going to click on this and I'm going to right click and I'm going to add data. Oops, there we go. Got that. So let's add one. So this is going to be the hot streams. And then we'll go into the box for selecting the X values. The X values are going to be the temperatures here. And I'm going to the box for the Y values. I'm going to delete what's there. And the Y values are going to be the cumulative values. So I'll click OK. I have the hot stream, the cooling curve. Let's put the cold streams, the heating curve. The X values are going to be these temperatures. And the Y values are going to be these temperatures. And we'll click OK. And voila, we have those two curves, what you saw in the slides. I've modified it a little bit in terms of adjusting the interval here for the temperature, so I'm just going to click that and change the minimum from zero. So let's say two, five, zero. That spreads it out perfectly. I'm going to close that format axis. And then if I want to move the heating curves, the cold streams are being heated up, up and down, I can just change this value of zero to a thousand. And it moves it up, so I can change it to 11,000. And move it up, and that is pretty close to where I want to be in order to get the difference in temperature along any horizontal line. The, the minimum difference between these two curves along the horizontal would be 10 degrees. I'm pretty close to it right there with that. But anyway, this is how you create those curves. It's a fairly simple way that you can do it. And it once you have a spreadsheet like this to work with, then you can accommodate multiple streams and change it for different systems, for different processes, very, very simply, and it automatically will create the curves for you and allow you to, to adjust them. So with that, bye for now.